Hi everyone and welcome to Mutually Mann, hosted by the Thomas Mann House and the S. Fischer Verlag. My name is Tobias Boes and I'm excited to introduce you to one of my favorite Mann stories, Mario and the Magician. Mario and the Magician dates to a crucial period in Thomas Mann's life. He wrote most of the story in August 1929, while on vacation with his family in a resort town on the Baltic Sea. It was published in April 1930, and the eight months in between these two events by all measures marked the high point of his career. On November 12, 1929, he received a call from the Swedish Academy, letting him know that he had just been awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. And at an impromptu party that the German Writers Association threw for him that same weekend, he in fact read from Mario, and it was received with tremendous acclaim, the Lord Mayor of his hometown telling him that Munich had every reason to be proud of him. Similar congratulatory language came in a telegram from the German Chancellor, who said that Mann's achievement was an honor for the German nation. That same November, his publisher began delivery of a new People's Edition of Mann's great novel Buddenbrooks, which would go on to sell 950,000 copies, the second largest print run of any German novel in history, eclipsed, eclipsed only by All Quiet on the Western Front the previous year. So things were going very well for Mann. He had fame, he had cultural prestige, and he had money part of which he used to buy a vacation home very close to the resort town where he had written Mario. Now things in Germany as a whole were not going so well in 1929 and 1930, however. These are the years during which the Nazis grew from a fringe group into a formidable force at the national level. They emerged as the second strongest party from the Reichstag elections of September 1929, and public discourse in Germany was shifting as well. When Mann took to the stage a month after the elections in order to repudiate Nazism, Nazi stormtroopers disrupted the proceedings, and the famous author had to flee through a side door. And when Mann in early 1933, just weeks before Hitler's seizure of power, dared to offer some minor criticisms of the composer Richard Wagner in a public lecture, some of the same local dignitaries who had celebrated him around the time that Mario was completed declared him to be a stain on the honor of the Richard Wagner city Munich. Soon, Mann would find himself cut off from his native country, from his friends, and from his main sources of income. He would have to watch from afar as his books were being tossed onto bonfires. Now, this tragic reversal is foreshadowed in Mario and the Magician, in which a German family on vacation in a fictional Italian town on the Tyrrhenian Sea helplessly stands by as their holidays take a rather unfortunate turn. Like virtually all the stories that Mann wrote prior to about 1930, this one too was inspired by personal experiences. The Manns had spent the summer of 1926 in a resort town called Forte de Marmi, where they too clashed with the authorities because they had let their eight-year-old daughter run naked on the beach. They too were kicked out of a hotel for dubious reasons, and they too sought comfort in the magic show of a traveling entertainer. Fortunately, their evening at that show did not have such a tragic conclusion as it does in the story. But even back in 1926, Mann privately attributed these unpleasant experiences to the influence of fascism and to the rise of xenophobic nationalism under Mussolini. After he finished his story, he wrote to his Italian translator, Lavinia Mazzucchetti, to let her know that a publication south of the Brenner Pass was for the time being out of the question. Little did he anticipate, however, that he would soon be an unwanted person north of the Alps as well, and indeed that his very life would be at risk. Mario and the Magician remains a popular story in Germany, and with nationalist rhetoric on rise again everywhere in the world, it is perhaps time to rediscover it in America as well. So I very much look forward to reading it with you over the coming week of Mutually Mann.